If you're a fan of IDM or Aphex Twin in general, you may have seen that there was a new software that came out. It's free to download, I think on GitHub. Um, it's a collaboration from Aphex Twin and Dave Griffiths. It's called Sample Brain. And this thing looks trippy. So our producer extraordinaire, Curtis here, was able to download it and did a little bit of work on it. So he's gonna take us through the software and then we'll hear a couple of the sound sources or sounds that he's created through it. I haven't heard it yet, I haven't used it, uh, but from everything he said, it sounds like it makes some crazy sounds. The one thing we have worked out is, uh, that one thing I have worked out is that itself is quite CPU intensive, mm. uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I wouldn't say it's like massively CPU intensive. I also, as as I say pretty much every week at this point, I'm working on a very old laptop. <laughs> so it's quite CPU intensive, but it is bloody amazing. Um, so basically, I'll bring this up here so that you can kind of see uh, the extent of it. As you so bring it up, let me just run through what Apex Twin describes it as. So he says, what if you could reconstruct source audio from a selection of other MP3s slash audio on your computer? What if you could build a 303 riff from only acapellas or bubbling mud sounds? What if you could sing a silly tune and rebuild it from classic music files? You can do this with Sample Brain. <laughs> In theory, yes, you can. Uh, very much so. Um, it's... Uh... <laughs> How do you describe this? Basically, it, it mangles sounds together and it creates, it basically takes uh, a number of samples that you can load into it, chops it up into its own pieces uh, with uh, algorithms and then uh, spits it out in a different fashion. And Interesting. I mean, you could create a 303 sound from uh, an acapella if you really wanted to. Or bubbling um, mud. Or bubbling mud, yes, very much so. It's a little bit more ad hoc than that. I okay. mean, but I mean, that's, I suppose, it's the fun of it, I suppose. So this is the basic the key of it in its own right. And basically you start by loading sounds here. This is what it is here. I've, lo I've loaded, okay, so I've noticed, I've been playing around with the demo pack that it gives you. Mm -hmm. I've been playing around with some samples that you can put in. It works best with short samples. Now I've uh, loaded in some longer samples, which are like between six and 11 seconds, and it doesn't like it as much. Um, but if, I, if you cut them down to about uh, between one and three seconds that seems to be fine i think it's one of those that the more time you have and the more kind of what much you the amount of time you're willing to wait the more it will mangle it and the bigger samples you can have it just takes a bit longer gotcha. um for consistency's sake and for um uh, the, the, the purposes of this demonstration i'm using the demo pack okay. so you, basically you load the sounds that you see here and then we have four. So we have a clunk, a flitter, a sequence, and a flatter. These are basically one shots. Um, and they, yeah, the clunk, and they do sound like clunks on their own. You can listen to them. It just had the door shut, the shutting and stuff like that. And it's fine. So one, I downloaded a load of one shots from Splice um, for drums, and then which worked just as fine. But then also uh, I got some like different like harps and trumpets and oboes and yeah. stuff like that nice put them through they worked fine uh just less effective or slower basically yeah okay so you get the sound in and then what are some of your tweaking options so well that is that is one to be experimented with basically ah. they don't make they don't make much sense in the room but okay so first <laughs> off first off you say regenerate brain so everything okay so it goes basically from uh right to left so you add oh. them, this is your brain here right uh-huh and then you, re you re or you generate the brain where basically it puts them into cuts them up and puts them in order essentially right right um, and you can choose this is they're all random so how often or how big the chunks are for example how much or uh, how often they're, they're cut up then whether or not those blocks which have been chopped up overlap over each other so you've got some resampling there and that kind of thing mm -hmm. and then what seems to be the window shape, which I think I, I, I've fathomed is basically here, have a different, uh, have a different kind of like waveform or something like that, <laughs> uh, essentially. So yeah, that comes right. So this is what you do here. And then you can say, if you want to, you can save that brain just as it is. Okay. Um, and then you can come back to it later before you go into the brain tweaks on this side here. Um, now, my, my, I want to, from what I've found, novelty, boredom, and stickiness, technically spelt wrong, but stickiness uh, is there. 
Um, English teacher is coming out right now. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so I found that if you play with these three, you get the most variety coming through. Um, frequency and dynamics, these are more like your kind of like your sound design stuff. Okay. But then getting like different sounds, different, uh, yeah, literally different novel ideas in your sample. These are the best ways to kind of get it done. Uh, you can then stretch these samples, for example, uh, coming through. Your algorithm, um, they have their own algorithms which are named thus, basic, reverse, synaptic, and slide. I found the most fun with personally with synaptic, but I mean, you do you, you do what you want to get done. Um, and then you can kind of come through here and tweak with these a little bit more. I can't play the sound through here, so we're going to go over to the Google Drive where we put some stuff up so you can see. Um, but the the ways that we can make that work is very varied in what they do. You can sample your sample before you record it um, by just hitting play, put it through, and then you hit record and it will send it directly into, in my case, it sent it into my downloads because that's the default, but you obviously mm -hmm. have to change it if you want to. You can then, it'll do it as a, as a WAV file and then obviously you can put that into your DAW or your sampler in your case your SP404 sample <laughs> you put them through you can mangle them I think the again the fun is with the novelty the boredom the stickiness and if you want more kind of like melodic stuff you want more novelty if you want more glitchy more uh, more techno-y stuff maybe bring the boredom up and bring the novelty down but that's okay. you go have fun basically <laughs> so uh, let's That's the beauty of it, right? To just exactly, explore it. Yeah. Exactly. So for now, I'm going to uh, bring this up and bring up these guys I've got here. Let's bring up this tab here. Let's do some. Let's do this one. I don't know which one this is, but let's go with this one for now. So. Whoa. That's cool. Wow. That's weird. <laughs> now you can do longer if you want. I just select. I just. Did a short one for the purposes of demonstration. Right. But you can elongate them if you want to. Okay. Let's do that again. That's really, really rough. That's crazy. Yeah. And do you recall now, what the sound source was? Was it like the clank thing or something? The, these are all. These are all oh, from the, the demo. Yeah. These are oh, all okay. from the demo. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So you can chop them up, do them as you wish. Now I did the same thing. Hang on. If I share this tab instead, so I do this one here. Mm -hmm. um, you can do the same thing. I think uh, this one, I increased the novelty and lowered the boredom and played around with some of the other parameters. It's all very ad hoc and yeah. it was a very just kind of random to kind of do it. A bit more Morse Cody, a bit different. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the same samples, which has then just been done in a different way, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll play one more time. Just a bit, yeah. Like, I used to have a hearing test when I went to the, went to the, went to the hospital yeah. when I was a kid. I'm like, that's when you have to click. That, you know? Right? When yeah, you hear yeah, a beep, you've got to click. Yeah. <laughs> again, so this is just, again, just fucked with the parameters in a different way. Same samples coming through. <laughs> now, did you make any 303 sounds from a bubbling mud? I'm not quite sure I'm that good a producer. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not quite sure I'm that good a producer. I think you're too I mean, humble. Again, but all right. I'd say maybe it's too humble. But we'll have to see. So like, the 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 end the, the the jumping off points and the ability to use something as a sample and create something. You could chop that up and turn that into a drum beat. You could stick Valhalla on there and suddenly you've got an ambient drone. You know? Oh. Like. You're speaking uh, my language now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the possibilities are endless on this, and this is, it's really, it's a really novel way of creating some form of just jumping off point for your production. I can imagine, again, taking that through modular and then resampling that and seeing what happens when you stick that through. That would just, yeah, you could do anything with that. So do you foresee any ways of incorporating that into your workflow as it stands now, like in normal song or in your normal songs or something, or is that kind of like, you want to just start with those sounds and build something around it. If it were me, or at this point, what sprung to mind in the first instance is I would then, I would take that WAV file, I would uh, put that into Ableton, I would chop it up either by hand or in Ableton. I, I suppose in Logic as well, you can just cut up by beats, yeah. for example. And I would then turn that into a drum beat. That would be where I would start with okay. me on that one. Um, Interesting. Yeah, for the Morse Cody stuff, for example, maybe, you know, turn it into a little arpeggiator, re-pitch re it, that kind of thing, yeah. go from there. Um, 
that's that would be where I would do that. Again, that's just me just purely thinking about something on the way through. It seems like a really good idea generator. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of what we're what we've where we kind of want to go with. You know, if you if you're stuck or if you, there's something that you don't want to, or if you're stuck in a rut in terms of the studio or something like that, mm-hmm. this could be a really good way to get past that. Trying something new, getting a new process coming through. And it's free yeah. if anybody wants to download it. I think it's free over on GitHub. It's on GitLab. Um, oh, which GitLab. Is okay. GitHub, the same thing? I don't know. I'm going to put it in the chat now. Yeah, I mean, you know us, we love free stuff, especially Valhalla. But this seems like another really cool, just throw it on, see what you can make, and go from there. Little idea yeah. generator. Our podcast is on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And so if you like to listen to podcasts over there, you can head over to Audionautic on it. The links are also in the description. And if you'd be so kind as to leave a rating and or a review, it helps a ton and we appreciate it. And if you need some new music, check out the Audionautic Radio playlist. That is also in the description. It's updated about every week. There's some really cool tracks on there. And if there's anything you want to submit, you can DM myself or the Audionautic Twitter and we'll give it a listen. So yeah, thank you very much. See you next week. Take it easy. Thanks for watching.